Hello, my sweet friends. This is Tracy. I am back again this season with some Christmas in July country crafts. Now, my flip-flop Santa, my cheesy Christmas lights, and my upbeat beach music is back again to inspire you and create some things for Christmas in July. I'm so glad that you're here. Let's get started. I picked up this wood stocking over at Hobby Lobby in their Christmas crafts section. So what I'm going to do is give it a coat of black paint. I paint the entire thing black. Even though I'm going to cover the top, uh, I just want it to be cohesive. All right, so then uh, I use my heat tool just to help uh, get that dry a bit. Then I am going to take just some Elmer's school glue and add uh, a layer of that all on the stocking and just uh, smooth that out with my paintbrush. Then I use my heat tool just to dry that up just until that Elmer's glue is tacky. Uh, that is just the key that I have found. It needs to be a little bit wet, not all the way wet and not all the way dry either. So once once it is tacky, I'm just going to use some uh, plaster color chalk paint and give it a coat of that. I try to go one direction, not go over it too much uh, like with the plaster paint because I want those beautiful big cracks on my stocking. And I use my heat tool just to dry that up so that it does dry a little bit faster. And there on the toe of the stocking, I had uh, put my finger in that. So I'm going to tell you real quick how I fix that. I just put some black paint over that again, added a, a tiny bit of the Elmer's glue, let that dry to a tacky consistency. Then I added some of the plaster chalk paint over it and then it all blended in and I didn't have the smudged look from where my thumb hit that finger uh, or hit my stocking. So I just wanted to share that tip. Uh, I like to encourage my community, my viewers, that even if you mess up, just figure out a way to fix it. All right. So then I like to add a bit of shading, a little bit of brown around my stocking. And so I have a flat paintbrush and some brown color paint, just acrylic paint. I dip half of my brush in paint, the other half in clean water. It's on the right hand side out of the camera range. I'm sorry about that. But then I blend all those paper towels. I go around the whole stocking just to give it some brown shading. So then now I want to add a little bit of glimmer. I first started with this iridescent glitter dust spray that I got off of Etsy, but it wasn't quite shimmery enough. So I uh, pulled out my adhesive spray. This is just a uh, craft bond and my diamond glitter. And I did that. I like that much better. I just spray the adhesive spray, then sprinkle on a little bit of the glitter. And then that gives me the shimmer that I like for my project. All right, so then now I have this fur. I got it uh, on a remnant from Hobby Lobby. It was uh, in those bins where they have like extra, I guess, from the ends of fabric and that kind of thing. And so I said, oh, this would be perfect for my Christmas stockings and Chris and beards and all of my different decor. So what I'm doing is just cutting off a piece of that and just gluing it there to the top of that wood stocking. Now I left, uh, I didn't glue it down yet where that hole is for the stocking because I need to attach my tassel as well as my stocking hanger. So then once I do that, then I go back and I glue all of that down shut. For my tassels, I'm just using some of this homespun yarn that I've had on hand. I just got it at the craft store many years ago, but there are so many different versions uh, brands and all kind of textures when it comes to yarn and string and all of that good stuff. So I just wanted my project to tie all in together. So I'm just cutting 10 
pieces of this yarn then I gather it together up at the top and then I have some clear rubber bands that is what is in that little container and I get those at the Dollar Tree in the hair accessory section and those I just use those in my crafting uh, because they just work so good so I just tied that around there like that then I just wrapped some yarn with it and then just hot glued it so that I have my uh, my tassel so then to make a hanger for the tassel I just have some jute cording or some hemp cording and then I have some 20 millimeter balls I just thread three of those on there and then then I'm just gonna make that and then I'll tie all of those together on the side of my stocking add some pine and I'll add a hanger and a bow with some ticking fabric that I also got in the remnant section at Hobby Lobby so uh, I love that frequently I do check those remnant section areas because they do have some really nice fabric that I can use for my country Christmas crafts or just for everyday crafts but here we're doing Christmas crafts so I'll just continue to do that making my little tassels tying them there on the side and then just creating this neutral Christmas stocking that I just love the way that it turned out. This cute Christmas project is using one of those wood cutting boards from Hobby Lobby. Now this is from the fall season, uh, but other holidays have them as well. And uh, if you don't have a cutting board, you could use another piece of board or Dollar Tree has a really cute uh, boards as well. So what I did is I removed the hanger because I didn't want to get any of the paint on that. And then just taking my plaster color chalk paint and I just uh, gave it two coats of that just on the top of of the uh, cutting board because I wanted to keep the wood on the back so what I'm going to use here is my Magnolia Design Co stencil this is the ticking stencil I absolutely love this one I will have a link for it uh, while it's available in the description box you can check that out now I'm just using the coal black chalk paste and just my uh, ticking stripe stencil and my uh, paintbrush squeegee 
cheese and I'm just using that. I am, I am a painter. And so I absolutely love these paintbrush squeegees. I can control them a little bit better than the other squeegees. They're just, I guess my fingers are too fat and I just can control the paintbrush squeegee a little bit better. So this right here is called a peel and reveal. And it is just, oh, it's so satisfying just to take that off and just see the beautiful design that it leaves on there. So then once I get that done, then I'm going to paint the rest of the handle just black and set that to the side to dry. Then now I'm going to work on the cute words. Now this is a cutout from Hobby Lobby. They come in a pack there in the Christmas craft section. So what I did to give it the stained look, I used my favorite method, which is the antique wax from Waverly that I get over at Walmart. And then I use a baby wipe and just put a bit of stain on there. And it's just perfect. I just absolutely love this stain method for my projects. All right, so then now I'm going to add some brown shading to uh, around or like underneath the ticking. And so I had forgotten that I'm because of my method, I dip half of my brush in paint, the other half in water. Then I blend on a paper towel. There on the, by my left thumb, I got a little smudge on that uh, because that chalk paste, it kind of becomes uh, smudgy then. So I have to remember that when I'm uh, working with chalk paste and water, make sure and not smear it. All right, so then now I use my silver glimmer dust. I got this off of Etsy. You can uh, check the link in the description box. I will have it for that. Then I'm going to add a little bit of uh, distress or actually just definition with my vintage photo distress ink and my little finger dauber just going around the edges of that. A Merry Chris, a Merry Holly Jolly Chris. Christmas. That is what this little ornament says. That is going to be the words for my small cutting board. So I just use my three-in-one beacon glue as well as hot glue just to tack that down uh, there at the top. Then uh, to add the decoration or embellishments at the top of the cutting board, I just wrap some jute around it and then I'm just going to add some pine and uh, just make it really cute and I just love the black and white and green uh, accents for this holiday season. I added a couple of small rusty jingle bells that I had in my stash and I added them with some of this brown wire that I got over at Michael's in the Christmas section. It's brown but to me it looks like it could pass for rusty wire so I love having it in my stash. Just wrapping my jingle bells on there and just twisting it on around the neck of my uh, small cutting board like that. Then I'll just make my bow with my jute ribbon and then I added back the uh, hanger for the small cutting board and this is a perfect little gift you know that you could give to different co-workers teachers gifts you can make them for a great craft sale uh, there'll be great craft show sellers just a little something just to say I'm thinking of you and I wish you a very merry holly jolly Christmas I found this sign in the shape of a hexagon during my 90% off sale at Hobby Lobby. It was $1.29, so I'm using it here for this project. So it had something, um, some other kind of wording on it, but I used my plaster 
chalk paint and gave it two coats of that uh, inside of that. I tried to be very careful because uh, I didn't want to have to pull out painter's tape and that kind of thing, but it is okay. I did well. So uh, then I have this uh, Holy Family Nativity ornament also from Hobby Lobby in the Christmas section. And I'm gonna go ahead and give it a coat of black paint. Put that to the side so that dries while I work on the rest of my sign. So once my hexagon is uh, dry, the paint is dry, I'm gonna go ahead and give it some shading with my brown paint and a flat paintbrush and some water. I dip half of my brush in paint, the other half in clean water. I blend there on a paper towel and then I go around the edges just to give it some depth and dimension for that. Then I just take my brush and just to kind of break up the white of the background, I just go and give it uh, just some shading or just some lines through the background just to break it up a bit and make it, uh, just give it a little bit of interest. The stencil that I'm using, is, the words say true story and it's perfect for this project. This is a Magnolia Design Co. stencil. I will have a link for that in the description box below. Uh, and uh, also going to be using the glittering copper chalk paste. That is what I'm going to be using to put this uh, stencil on my sign. So I'm also using my uh, paintbrush squeegee. I cannot express to you how happy I am that this, uh, that these are available because since I am a painter, I am very um, familiar with using a paintbrush and I just love, I can control the paintbrush squeegees a little bit better. I will have a link to my shop in the description box if that is something that you're interested in. So I just use the glittering copper uh, and my paintbrush brush squeegee and just go along. And once I get all of that on there, then it is time to peel and reveal. Again, like I uh, mentioned before in other projects, this is so, so, so satisfying because uh, you can just see it and you can just see your project just really come to life. I added a little bit of distressing to the nativity with my small finger sander, uh, not too much, just a little. And then I added some glistening with my diamond glitter and that adhesive spray, which I like to do just to give it a little bit of glimmer for my uh, silhouette. Then I am going to uh, take six wood split balls. They're the 20 millimeter size. And then I just glued them onto this stick. I got this tip from Alyssa over at Southern Crafts Corner on Facebook. Uh, I think it's genius. She just puts a little bit of hot glue on the stick and then I can uh, paint all the way around those split balls and hold the stick in my hand. Anyway, it's just those little bitty things that we pick up from fellow crafters, fellow creators that I am so grateful for. So sometimes that hot glue is a little thick underneath there once I pull those, uh, you know, when I pull off my split balls but that's okay if I can't get it off with my finger or my sander then I just uh, hit it with my heat tool and that hot glue just comes right off and then I'm gonna glue everything down I'm just using my three-in-one beacon glue to glue down the silhouette to the um, hexagon sign then I'll go ahead and do the same thing with my uh, split balls I just add those in where those you know, corners meet on that hexagon. And I just love the way that that all turns out. Then I think I thought that it needed just a little bit more. So I had some of that glittering copper paint left on my plate. So I went ahead and just did some stars on the sign just to add a little bit of interest. But before I do that, I went ahead and used the mustard seed color chalk paste and just enhanced the star on the nativity just to make that a little bit more brighter and stand out on this whole decor piece.
for this cute Christmas tree craft. I am totally in love with it. I found this photo block in the clearance section at Hobby Lobby for $1.49. And what I did is I used my little finger sander just to sand off the majority of the writing. And then I'm going to give it two coats of plaster color chalk paint. I just used a baby wipe just to get off all of those dust particles before I painted it. Then uh, once the paint was dried, then I pulled out that ticking uh, stencil from Magnolia Design Co. and the uh, glittered copper chalk paste. I am so in love with this for this neutral uh, crafts, Christmas crafts for this video series here. And so I, uh, after I fuzzed it a little bit more, I went ahead and measured, uh, measured it out just to get it on there evenly and then I went ahead and gave it a thin layer covering the whole front of that block with that glittered coppered uh, chalk paste. So then uh, carefully uh, I'm going to be doing some shading with the brown uh, acrylic paint that I like to do and the water and so I just do that. Uh, then I went to Cricut Design Space and I found this Merry Christmas decal in Cricut Design Space and what I did is I uh, inserted a shape, a rectangle shape, and I resized it to uh, six by four. And then I inserted my Merry Christmas image and then I resized it from there. So that way I knew that I, it would fit on my block. Then I just cut that out on my small Cricut Joy uh, cutting machine on some black Smart Vinyl and then just weeded it uh, the way that I just absolutely hate weeding. It just like gives me the chills just to even talk about it because I just absolutely hate weeding. It's my least favorite to, uh, task to do when working with my Cricut, but the end result is so pretty. And so then I put the decal on the front of my block here. Now for the Christmas tree, I found this brown fabric it was in a remnant. I was so fortunate that day when I was at Hobby Lobby, when I checked their remnant section, they had so many different small cuts of just different fun fabric that I could use for my Christmas crafts this season. So what I did is I'm going to be using this for my tree. I, uh, for that wooden tree, that is one wooden tree from the dollar tree. I use some of that Waverly Antique Wax. That is my favorite way to stain uh, any wooden project and so, or any wooden piece. And I stained the front and the back because I have found that uh, Dollar Tree signs do warp a bit. And so I didn't want it to do that. So if I, I always try to paint the backs because that does help with and you know don't want it to be warped and I want my project to be finished so with that fabric what I did is I just traced out the tree and then cut it out with my fabric scissors then I'm going to use my three-in-one beacon glue and just glue this Christmas tree I'm only going to be gluing it to the front of the tree because I, the wooden tree because I'm going to be uh, setting it in that wire swirly uh, spiral and I didn't want it to be too heavy but if you are fortunate to find some of these blocks or if you wanted to make something similar to this you could always make it reversible have it be on both sides that would be totally awesome because the way that this is made it could totally be made on both sides so after I finish gluing my tree and positioning you know just make sure that it is all down on the sides and everything then I'm just going to stick it right there in that spiral oh my goodness I'm so in love with this. I love when ideas come together and thankful to the Lord for giving me these wonderful ideas and for this community to share them with. All right. So then I just have a couple of pieces of pine uh, that I had on hand. And so I have some floral tape, some green floral tape. I'm going to uh, do that just kind of working in steps. That's just kind of how my brain works. And I kind of piece them together here, uh, kind of making a swag. And then I'm going to be using some 
fine excelsior that is my favorite i love that for my little whimsical crafts and uh, just be using some of that as well and then i just glue it right there on the top i'm going to make a bow out of some muslin fabric and just cutting pieces of that just making a bow just uh tying it all together then i'll just glue that there in the center of that swag i did add a little bit more excelsior to kind of cover up that green floral tape and just make everything look fun and festive and i absolutely love the way that this christmas craft turned out and these neutral i'm really loving really digging the neutral colors this christmas season <music> 